Hello students, we will now move on to the next topic in module 1 which is machine independent assembler features. Okay, so the first one we will be discussing in this video is literal. Now, you have seen literal in the object codes that you have generated. Okay, see for example, what is the necessity of literal is mentioned through this particular assembly code. See, for example, you have a instruction LDA and then phi has its operand. And then since phi is an operand, its reference will be somewhere else. That is phi will be a label and then word is the constant and the value of that constant is phi. So if instead of having such a instruction that is by giving an operand has a label somewhere else and then assigning the constant value we can use literals that is it is convenient to write the value of constant operand as a part of instruction so these two instructions can be now written as lda equals to x which is a constant zero Okay, so LDA equals X05 is a literal. Whenever you see an equal sign, it means it's a literal and the constant is directly defined as a uh, part of the instruction that is in the operand, it is directly defined. So here we have an example. As I said, a literal starts with prefix equals to, okay, followed by the specification of the literal value. See, for example, you have a literal defined here, which is LDA equals to CEOF, which is a character um, string here, okay, EOF. Now, here, you know how to produce the object code, guys, right? Okay, so how do you decide on the displacement? That is the three um, hexas here. It is nothing but target address minus program counter, right? Okay, now, what is the target address? So, target address is nothing but where this EOF is located, right? So as I said, this EOF will be considered as a literal and uh, we will be usually storing the literals at the bottom most place in the assembly code. See, for example, here we have uh, um, C equals to C EOF and then its address is 002D. So in the target address, you'll have 002D and in the program counter, the address next to this instruction is nothing but 001D, right? Why 1D? Because the length of this instruction is three. So if you add three to 1D, it comes to 1D. So if you try to subtract 001D from 002D, you get 010. So this is what is uh, the um, displacement. I hope you know why displacement is calculated, yeah? Displacement is nothing but target address minus PC. Or you can say target address is nothing but displacement plus PC. So if you add the displacement to the program counter value, which is 001D is added to 010, you get 0020. So you directly jump to this target address. Okay, this is how you define constant. There are two ways to define constants. One is uh, through a pool called as literal pool. Okay, that is through LTORG. That is, uh, this is a literal pool. Whenever you see an LTORG uh, directive, it means the next instruction that is followed uh, after LTORG is a literal pool. Okay, so here we have defined a literal equals to CUF and its value is defined over here. Clear? Similarly, uh, as I said, there are two ways to have literal pools. One is by mentioning via a directive which is LTORG or else you can put all the literals at the end of the assembly code. See, for example, here we have two instructions which have literal. That is a TD is one literal and WT equals to X05 is a literal. And similarly here also, this is 011. I hope uh, this will also, this is also clear to you. This is also nothing but TA minus PC. So what is the target address, which is 1076 minus what is PC? The length of this instruction is 3, right? So 1062 plus 3 is 1065. So if you try to subtract 1065 from 1076, you get it as 011, yeah? Okay, that is 011, okay? Uh, similarly, with respect to WD, here also we define a literal. See, even if you define a literal, its value should be mentioned after LTORG or at the bottom 
of a assembly code okay so x05 is also a literal and its value is mentioned at the bottom okay so you have two options you can have literal pools uh, by mentioning lt org directive or you can place all the literals at the end of the program that is also fine okay okay so one one thing about literal is uh, literal uh, if you try placing all the literals together then they are more nearer to the instruction they are organized that is all literals can be found in a single location or in a particular uh, area okay so that is the advantage of having literal pools okay now there is a difference between literals and immediate uh, operands. You know that you have seen little, uh, immediate operands. So immediate operand is mentioned by hash sign. That means directly you take this value and uh, put it in the object code. But in literals, you don't do that. Okay, You define the literal, but then uh, its uh, address or location will be somewhere else. That is, you give the displacement here and then you add this, uh, add this displacement to program counter in order to get the target address so has uh, the definition is mentioned here assembler generates a specified value has a constant at some other memory location that is in the ta location the definition of eof which is uh, 454f46 will be at uh, some other location okay that is a target address location so that is the difference between immediate operand and literal in immediate directly you will see the operand itself in the object code but then in the um, literal you will see the value in some other uh, location that is in the target address location yeah, as i said uh, you have two options uh, literal pools one is uh, uh, it can be placed at the end of the program or you can use uh, ltorg so when the assembler encounters ltorg statement it generates a literal pool containing all literal operands used since previous ltorg Reason is to keep it close to the instruction. Yeah. So similarly, how you have a sim table where you have the uh, symbols and the associated uh, addresses of all the symbols or the labels. Similarly, you have a lit tab, which is a literal tab, and the contents of literal tab is it will have the literal uh, name and then uh, the value of the literal and the length of the literal and the address. Okay. See, for example, if I have to talk about uh, EOF, what is the name of the literal? EOF is the name of the literal. And what, what is its uh, operand value? It is 454F46, right? 454F46. What about the length? Length is 3, right? 3 only for the EOF. Why? Because this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 hexa. If you know, this is 6 hexa. So 6 into 4 is nothing but 24. And 24 bits, if divided by um, uh, 8, which is uh, going to give you 3 bytes, right? Why 8? Because if you want to convert bits to bytes, you have to divide it by 8. So this is 3 byte, okay? So its length is going to be 3. And what about the address? Yeah, wherever this UF is actually stored, that address will be given in this location, okay? Now. See, similarly, how you have generation of object codes, right? You have to generate uh, object codes even for um, constants, right? For example, when you see e EOF defined as a literal and thereafter its address is somewhere down, you will have to generate 454F46. So there is a process for it. Similarly to the object codes that you generate for any normal instruction, you have the same for uh, uh, literals as well. So there is pass one. In pass one, you will have to enter uh, the literal name, operand value, and length in the lit tab table and um, leave the address unassigned because you have not still encountered the LTORG or you have not come to the end of the program, right? Only then you get the addresses, right? Okay. So once you come, there are four, you get the addresses and then you load it to the address field of uh, lit tab table in pass one. Now, so we are uh, done with the uh, table. Now you will have to generate uh, object codes for uh, literals, right? So we will search the lit tab table in pass two for each of the uh, operand uh, encounter. And then we will generate data values using byte or word statement. Yeah, that is 454F46 is generated here. Clear? So 
generate modification codes so this is an optional thing that is you will have to generate you know why modification records are uh, used right modifications records are used whenever you use the direct addresses right so if there are some literals that represent an address directly in the program then you will probably have to include modification record as well i hope uh, the session was clear we will begin with um, another uh, uh, topic on machine independent feature in the next video thank you